What's up, everybody? Bets and ball games with Edwards and Greason here at Southeastern 14. Before we get started, let's talk about our good friends at Bet Online. They remain the top spot for all your live betting action and contest NFL, college, or UFC, and NHL. NBA are in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action, along with every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that is all caps B L E A V. Again, all caps B L E A V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. All right. Jay joins us from Chattanooga Times Free Press headquarters. What's going on, brother? Uh, not much. Getting excited for Sunday. Uh, and then we got to start really paying attention to once the Taylor Swift Bowl is done, we have really – I mean, college basketball is about to be – this is going to be, I think, the craziest tournament in maybe two decades. Because if you Why go back and look for like the last 15 years, it's a whole lot of pretty familiar names. Your UConn's got a couple. You know Duke's in there. Kansas is going to be in there. Carolina's in there. Jay Wright's Villanova had a couple. Kentucky in 2012. Louisville, even back when Louisville had a pulse. So, it, I mean, but this year – I think there's two dozen teams that could really – you look up and you're going, is that a six-seeded South Carolina playing to get to the Final Four? Right. And they have been to the Final Four in 2017. Unfortunately, I was there at MSG and NYC. Gators blew an eight or uh, seven-point halftime lead, and the Gamecocks went to the Final Four. And you know what? They have not been back to the NCAA tournament since, but that will be changing uh, very soon. Uh, before I forget, let me give you the updated odds uh, from FanDuel to win the SEC regular season title. Auburn is now the plus-130 favorite. Alabama was the favorite last week. Vols are plus-165. Bama plus 340, South Carolina plus 950, Kentucky 95 to 1, the Gators and AM are 130 to 1, LSU and Ole Miss 250 to 1, Vandy and Mizzou not pictured. Uh, would, would any of those, uh, I mean, I was looking at South Carolina's schedule. I mean, they got to go to Auburn on was it Wednesday. It's on That's Valentine's. Right. The, yeah, so that was, that kind of took South Carolina out of the picture for me. Well, a couple of things. One, Auburn's schedule is pretty damn tough to be given. Yeah. I mean, their next five are at Florida, uh, Georgia, South Carolina, Kentucky, and at Tennessee. I mean, that's five games that, yeah, Auburn's great at home, but that's still five games that Janai Broom rolls an ankle – that could be one and four. So, uh, I mean, I don't like Auburn as a plus money. I would probably – I think Tennessee's the safest bet. But I, I think the I think the aggressive play there is check to see how long D.J. Wagner's going to be out. And if you can get Kentucky, who's only two games back in a loss column with eight games to play, at, pl at 95 to one – I that that's kind of tasty if DJ Wagner is only going to be out another game or two. Yeah, and that's the thing is we just don't know. So Wagner's right. missed three games, and Mitchell has missed two of the last three games. And uh, yeah, you're right, Kentucky. So at the top of the standings, we've got Auburn, Alabama, and South Carolina all at eight and two. Uh, the Vols at seven and two. Kentucky six and four. Florida and A and M at five and four. Um, yeah, so I, I like the plus nine fifty with. And by the way, I, I grabbed a just a little, just a little twenty bucks. But uh, actually, I did it twenty bucks twice on two separate accounts. But a hundred to one odds for the Gamecocks. I don't think the Gamecocks are going to win the national title. But if they get to the Sweet Sixteen with a hundred to one number, you know, I can start hedging. I can take their opponent, uh, their the opponent's odds to win it all, uh, and or the opponent. Well, we don't know if South Carolina will be favorite or underdog, but I can find a way. If they get to the Sweet 16, I'll 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 make sure I make a little bit of uh, profit. So, looking at South Carolina, what they've got coming up, they got 
Well, a layup with Vandy at home, but then at Auburn, a likely L. Um, in fact, I, I looked at Ken Palm. You are going to be favored by 10 in that game, at least according to Ken Palm. But then they they got to go at Ole Miss. They got to go at A&M. They got to go to the hump. And Florida and Tennessee at home aren't uh, guarantees. So um, I don't really have one I like out of all those. Um, all right, let's jump into all of the action for Saturday. Uh, we start uh, noon Eastern Alabama uh, at LSU. So LSU's leading scorer, Jalen Cook, who averages 15.5 points per game, uh, he is questionable. He missed uh, that blowout loss at Tennessee. Um, so with, with him, with his questionable status, I wrote down Bama minus seven. Uh, you got a guess on what you think it uh, should be? Uh, I guess we don't – I think it would be a point or point and a half one way or the other with Cook, whether he's absent or, or plays. Without Cook, without definite knowledge on Cook, uh, if Cook doesn't play, I think it's going to be closer to double digits because I, I think I think whether they admit it or not, the algorithms factor in bounce back moments and Alabama is going to show up ticked off because they got housed Wednesday night in Auburn, Alabama, and they got frustrated and they got flustered and they got pushed around. And, Grant Nelson got beat up physically. Yes, he did. And he fouled out and he and and Nate Oates looked displeased and and irritated. Did you see his quote about Sears after the game? No. He said Mark Mark's Mark's got to play better defense. If we're well, if we're gonna I mean, he called him out. Well, he's well. He ain't wrong. I mean, right. he, he ain't wrong. You're he right. called him out, but he's right. not wrong. If he so, ain't wrong, he ain't wrong. <laughs> I, I hear that. The uh, and I think LSU. See, one of the things that I've, I've found a little success in my afternoon email newsletter that's called Jay's Plays that you can sign up for at TimesFreePress.com that that does. Uh, my daily best bets across all sports. But wait, wait, time out. Why don't you tell us where that uh, that uh, overall tally is? Are we still above ninety units? Yeah, we're at ninety five plus units across Man. all sports. Doing it every weekday since For like October. eighteen months. Yeah, October of two thousand and twenty two. So we're at. Oh, that's good, brother. Units. That's good. And the best, the daily best bet is now north of sixty games over five hundred. It's like two twenty seven and uh, one fifty nine or something. But in in college basketball, we've seen we saw in January just an absolute steamroll of home under home unranked underdogs either covering or winning outright against ranked opponents. Well, I think when February gets here, and I and I was on Memphis last night, and they covered, because I think the home crowd at places like Temple, where the season is completely in the crapper, yeah. those home crowds are now about to just start withering away, and it's going to feel like an inter-squad scrimmage. Right. So what was once impossible to judge – in terms of home court advantage, now I think you're going to get a bounce back the other way where the talent is going to go on the road and push people around. And I think Alabama's going to do that at LSU. I'd be comfortable laying 10. What does Ken Palm have at it? Ken Palm's got uh, Alabama at minus eight and a total of 166. But, you know, like I think, you know, if Cook is in, maybe you shave a point off of that, and if he's out, you add another point, maybe even a point and a half either way. So, um, yeah, I, um, I I just don't know because we don't know about the LSU's leading scorer. They didn't have much offense the other night against a very good uh, Tennessee defensive team. And, uh, you know, their postseason hopes are dwindling. If, if they don't win this game, they may – we may see a little quit in the Bayou Bengals. All right, uh, Vandy at South Carolina. We know this one's going to uh, be in double digits. Uh, I wrote down thirteen. What, what, any thought? Any guess you, you got for me? I think that's the starting point. Uh, I think it probably could be a little higher than that. 
And I don't like it there. Uh, I think it's a South Carolina or stay away. But, I mean, South Carolina just going to just trying to chalk up W's. And, I mean, they're doing the Jameis Winston. They just want to smell the W. And so, at that point in time, winning by nine, Lamont Paris doesn't care if they win by eight. No. No. I, at the same time, though, I'm not back in Vandy. Uh, no. Ken Palm's got yeah. Ken Palm's got it at 15. What I will do is is I will back the under if so. Uh, Ken Palm's got it a 73 to 58 game, so that is 131. Uh, the under was on a 13 and two run for Vandy until Kentucky got it down, and and that one flew over the other night. But still, a 13 and three under run for Vandy. If, if the Ken Palm number is accurate, if it's in the 130s like that. I'll probably have. I'm not saying I love it, but I'll probably have a little on the under. I think. I think both of those are the the only sides you can justify. I mean, Vandy Vandy's is trustworthy as a New York City lawyer who calls you uh, on a payphone. I mean, that, that, that you can't you can't put a whole lot of stock in that. Uh, I, I wonder. I mean, I think Stackhouse is definitely gone. Um, I haven't really thought about candidates. Um, we shall see. I don't know that they got a, a whole lot of money to throw around. All right, Auburn at Florida. Woo, buddy. All right, here's your trivia question. When was the last time Auburn won at the O-Dome, and who was the UF head coach? I know who the UF head coach was. I actually – I'm not even sure. I've got a guess on who the Auburn head coach was at that time. Um We'll, we'll figure out the year, and then we'll try to figure out the coaches. Uh, you got a guess on the last time y'all won at the O-Dome? Well, with the last handful of years of the bouncing schedule where you don't play everybody twice, there's probably been a whole bunch of years that Auburn didn't make Did the not trip. play at Florida. Right. right. Correct. So uh, that takes away a whole bunch of Pearl's recent success against Florida's kind of flatlining. Before that, Auburn was indifferent, and Florida was pretty salty. So I'm going to go all the way back to um, Chris Porter's teams in the early 2000s. That's what I was going to ask you. When when was Porter there, like 03, 04, around that time? Yeah, it was like, it was like 02, 03, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, um, that was what I was kind of thinking. But no, it's not since 1996, which was Lon Kruger's last year before he went to Illinois. And I'm guessing that your coach was that guy that passed away with Tommy Joe Eagles. Tommy Joe Eagles. I think he'd already I think he'd already bought the farm then. Uh, And I'm looking him up. It may it may have been the first part of Cliff Ellis's term. Okay, okay, yeah, maybe. Let's see here. All right, Tommy Joe Eagles. Wasn't that his last name, or maybe not? Yeah, Eagles. Tommy Joe. It Eagles. was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I spelled uh, Tommy Joe with just without an e. Okay. Wow, he was only forty-five. Um. So, yeah, I guess he was fired at Auburn in 94 and passed away. Oh, wait. Y'all had not fired him, had you? Uh Uh-uh. Oh, yeah. He croaked on the job. July of 94, the age of 45. Wow, that is way too young. Oh, man, that's uh, awful. Uh, So that would have left Cliff Ellis early in his tenure, correct? That sounds right. Yep. All right. So Auburn, nineteen and four straight up, fifteen six and two against the spread. They're three and three straight up, three two and one ATS uh, on the road. The Gators, fifteen and seven straight up, ten eleven and one ATS at home. Nine and one straight up, five and five ATS. The only loss they led Kentucky nearly the entire game. Kentucky rallied, uh, ended up uh, winning. Uh, by three, the Gators have won four of their last five. Their four-game winning streak snapped. They blow a late lead at AM and lose 67-66 uh, last week uh, or last Saturday in College Station. But they've had the whole week to prepare, whereas Auburn coming off the rivalry game. Um, I wrote down Auburn minus one. Ken Palm has got Auburn minus four with a total of 160. 
and um, I I lean Gators if I can get four. You oh you I think? would too I would too it's a it's a tough spot and I think Florida is on the right side of the bubble as we speak, but games like this I'm not saying. Well, I am about to say it. I'm, I, you can't say – I'm not saying it means nothing to Auburn, but I am saying it means more to Florida. Yeah. Not only are they at home, but, I mean, Auburn could just about lose out and they're still going to dance. Florida, you start – I mean, that's – that. we're in February. We're tippy-toeing up on Valentine's Day. That has to start creeping into your head, whether you are on staff, whether you are a senior, whether you are – a kid who may or may not go to the league or try to go play professionally or even into the portal. This may be now is the time to start stacking uh, some W's that, that are meaningful. And this is one of those opportunities in a league. This is one that if you win this one, this is one of those that just it goes right next to your name immediately. Notable win, beat Auburn early February. And yeah, oh, go ahead. But uh, I, I, I like how hard it's, it's funny how a coaching change can make both programs better. Like Mike White going to Georgia has made Georgia better and Florida plays harder under, under golden. I mean, it's kind of, it, it's, a, it's a little bit just a testament to fit, but I'm not betting against Auburn because I mean, they were, they, they were destined to a double digit loss in Oxford last Saturday and they had a players only meeting in the locker room and they came out of the locker room and drummed the rebels. Yeah, that was very impressive. I was uh, at the sports bar enjoying a couple of cold Budweiser's and uh, I watched my Gators fall apart. And then I was on Ole Miss and Ole Miss looked great in the first half. And then you, you guys just came out and, took over um i know we both lost Ole miss i know you you're, i think you said your favorite pick was the over on uh kentucky and tennessee and that thing flew over yeah. early uh and often um i ended up not playing georgia i know we both were georgia leans that one did not work out um uh, uh vandy did go under with missouri um so there's some of our results from last uh, Saturday. So I'll be on Florida if I can get four. And I lean on, on I lean. Florida. Would you be on Florida on the money line? Uh, you know, uh, if it's plus four, they m might be like plus 150. Um, possibly. I would have more on the plus four, though. I would want to profit. Uh, you do cover. this way. You do this way more than I do, and you do a great job. And everybody can follow me at, at Vegas uh, B Edwards on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Elon Musk's uh, personal toy. The this is this screams like a real good opportunity to be paying attention in game because Auburn comes out strong, and you never can tell where the ball may roll. But I mean, I th I think I think the O Dome is going to be pretty loud come Saturday. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, if Florida comes out strong and gets like a ten point lead, Auburn could be a look um, live as well. Um, but you know, if Auburn gets out to a big lead, maybe Florida. You know, I think if you get either team like plus, I don't, I'm not saying if Florida got out to a ten point lead in the first half, you would be able to get Auburn plus seven. But um, you know, um, look, I. I in general, you know, I'm uh, my live bets. I'm looking to get a line that's like seven or eight points better than what it was pregame. That's kind of my general um, idea when I'm looking uh, for live bets. But I, yeah, I'll offer out a lean on the over uh, as well, and we will move on to Gonzaga at Kentucky. I like this. So you know, in recent years, SEC. Did the Big 12 challenge, you know, late January. I like throwing in a little one, not just one non-conference game in early February or whatever. And um, this is a, a huge one for Gonzaga that is actually number 22 at Kempom, but but they're a little iffy. They're a little bubbly for the first time since uh, they have been to every tournament, the Fuse's entire tenure, and then like one or two 
uh, before that, because I mean, I know the Gators lost to them out in Phoenix in the Sweet 16 in uh, 1999 on Casey Calvary's put back dunk in the final seconds. Um, yeah, but, but you're not hold, you're not holding any sour feelings about that at this point in time. I, I think every single NCAA tournament exit, I'm still bitter about pretty much. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, <laughs> they all suck. Um, I. I I love Kentucky in this spot. Gonzaga is has has I mean athletically they they have not seen this for the last six weeks. And I know Gonzaga is is recruiting and spending and playing at, at levels way beyond just the West Coast Conference. I know that, uh, but they've got no idea what's coming because Kentucky scores in bunches, brother in bunches and they do it efficiently they're top five nationally in in field goal in in adjusted field goal percentage which takes in threes and twos uh and i think they're top 10 in the, in the country in fewest turnovers committed so third third in turnovers so there you're looking at a team that shoots it well and protects it so you better be planning to score 90 when you go to rup because they are, and I, I'm, I'm comfortable laying way more than a dozen on this. Yeah, well, you're gonna love this because now we also got to remember we don't, we don't know about Wagner and Mitchell, two double figure scorers, but they scored 109 uh, the other night without either one of them, and they still scored 92 against Tennessee without them. So you're gonna love this. I wrote down six, but with the thought process of Mitchell and Wagner upgraded, I would upgrade it, you know, to right. eight or so. Um, Ken Palm's got Kentucky minus three. I don't know about that. Well, I, I don't... I, I'm, I'm going to bankroll all of my Super Bowl uh, hunches with yeah. a whole lot of big blue money. Uh, yeah, I would be on Kentucky minus three without Mitchell and, and Wagner yes. and with confidence. Um, and – Check out this total. Um, so 85, 82, so 167. Um, just a few things on Gonzaga since it's a non con uh game for our, our listeners and uh BBN out there. So Gonzaga always plays one of, if not the toughest non conference schedules in the country. And 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 they did this year to some extent. It's not their fault that Syracuse and UCLA are having awful you know, seasons, normally those are, you know, top 30 teams, if not top 15 teams. Um, they lost by 10 to Purdue. They lost at Washington by five, lost by 13 to UConn in Seattle, lost at home to San Diego State by 10. Their only bad loss at Santa Clara, they lost by one. Santa Clara is number 122 in Ken Palm. And then last week or this past Saturday, they lost by two at home uh, to St. Mary's, but uh, they beat uh, Syracuse, UCLA, and USC, that, which are all in the 90s in Ken Palm. They beat Yale, which is 86. Uh, they beat San Francisco at 70. So they don't really have any marquee wins. In fact, I don't think that's any quad one wins. So this is a huge game for Gonzaga. If they could steal it, that might would seal their bid. But obviously, they could still win their conference tournament, and we got a lot of basketball uh, left to play. But it's a big one uh, for the Zags. All right, let's move on to um, – or actually, I wanted to mention one thing as I look at my notes here. The over 17-3 and three for Kentucky in its last 20 20- games and uh Mitchell's averaging 12.3 points 7.6 rebounds 3.1 assists 1.2 blocks he's questionable along with Wagner who scores 12 points per game and 3.7 assists all right Georgia at Arkansas so Devo is going to be back for Arkansas he'd been on a little personal leave for a couple weeks he's having a bad senior year after having an excellent career it kind of reminds me of Brett Nelson uh with my Gators like 20 years ago uh, you young folks probably don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And Arkansas, one of their best players, Trevin Brazil, um, he is questionable. I think he's missed three in a row with a knee. Um, he's their top shot blocker. 
uh, one of their better rebounders as well. So I wrote down Arkansas minus three if Brazil is upgraded. Um, Ken Palm has Georgia minus one with a total of 149. That's 6 p.m. Eastern at Bud Walton Arena. Arkansas eight and four straight up, five and seven ATS at home. Georgia is three and three straight up, five and one ATS on the road. Uh, back to back road spot here for Georgia. They lost in Starkville the other night. Um, and the Hogs lost in Athens 76 66 on January 10th. Uh, what are your thoughts? here jay uh georgia needs a win bad if georgia doesn't win this their their bubble hopes are on life support well uh and i think that's important because i think arkansas is really about to quit and i mean the wheels have completely fallen off for musselman and did south carolina trade its entire roster with arkansas and then they sent them back and forth and we just didn't change anybody's name because south carolina was picked dfl and arkansas was picked what two or three mm-hmm. in the league at the beginning top, of the season top and, 10 nationally i think and now you look up and let's not even talk about there's no way missouri should be winless in this league arkansas number 10 nationally in wow. my magazine Wow. And are, are they 10 in the league? Are they 10 in the SEC? I think they're they – uh, no, they, they are – they're 12th. Just they're ahead, of ahead of Vandy and Missouri. Ahead of Vandy by one game, ahead of, ahead of Mizzou by two. Yep. Uh, I, think, I think Georgia knows its stakes. I think Georgia believes in itself too. And I know that back-to-back road swing is tough to go to Starkville, go back to Athens – get back on on late in the evening, figure out what you got to do, pretend like you're going to class, and then hustle across the – back all the way across into the central time zone to Arkansas. That's tough, but there's, there's no way I'm putting stock in anything Arkansas for the rest of the year. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, if, Brazil, if Brazil does not play – um, I'll might consider Georgia, but this is a likely pass, uh, for me. Um, all right, here's a good one. 8 PM Eastern, the Vols at A&M. So most of the bracketology guys, uh, have A&M in their last four buys, but still work to do. And this would be a huge one if they can get, like you were saying, if Florida beats Auburn, or, you know, if A&M gets this one, that little graphic they put up on CBS, you know, notables, win. Yeah. it'd be a big one. Okay. Um, I wrote down Vols minus four. Ken Palm has got Vols minus five. Total of 141. Here, I'll throw a few stats out before we get Jay's opinion. Uh, the Vols in six road games, four and two straight up, two and four against the spread. A&M is eight and three straight up at home, but only three and eight against the spread. What you thinking here? Well, there's only one side to play this in my mind. I Tennessee's just got way too much firepower for A&M. I mean, I mean, explain all you want about desperation, and I get it. And Buzz Williams is good, and he's good at getting these guys prepared, but. The last three times they've rolled the ball out there, Tennessee's been nasty. I mean, as good as just about anybody in the country. And that win by double digits going to Rupp and playing their style and putting a C note on them in Rupp, because I know College Station can be a tough place to play. It ain't Rupp. No, and not they, on a Saturday night. No, and they just dropped 103 on them. Uh, Connect is the SEC Player of the Year. Um Although I think in a lot of years it could very easily be Broom at Auburn or even uh, the point guard at Bama. I mean, there are a lot of guys having great years, but it's Dalton Connect. I mean, he yeah. is he is the linchpin that actually elevates Tennessee's hopes to a place where they can make – this is a staggering stat. And we talked about staggering stats, and I want you to share your Alabama-Auburn one that we all saw on ESPN the other night. But, you know, Tennessee, despite all their history and all the great players they've had, and now Tennessee is the second SEC school 
to have a football, a professional football Hall of Famer, a basketball Hall of Famer, and a Major League Baseball Hall of Famer now that Todd Helton has been elected. But they've never been to a Final Four. Tennessee's never been to a Final Four. Not even with Grunfeld and Bernard King. No, not even with Dale Ellis, not even with Allen Houston, not even not even when Bruce Pearl was over there hosting picnics for everybody. It Allen was, Houston didn't even get to an NCAA tournament game. Yeah, but that dude, man. Oh, he's that great. dude. That dude was such a good basketball player that he got he got his daddy a head coaching job. That's yes. when you know you can yes. really play. Yes. Because they're hiring pops. Yeah, because he was going to go to Louisville, and then uh, Vols were like, hey, if we hire your dad, you come play for us. Damn right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, how was that? How was that not paying for a signing back in the day, in the grand scheme of things? Well, didn't uh, Larry Brown hire Danny Manning's dad? Oh well, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Back, even As, before that, Dale you know Brown was coach, hired. Dale Brown hired some coaches. Do you uh, know who daddy. coached Pistol Pete Maravich? Well, P- Press Maravich. Yeah, that was the way to clean cheat. They call that was yeah. clean cheating yeah. back then. <laughs> that, that's like old Pappy Sadakis from uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou We're just going to press the flesh out there And uh, is you or is you not my constituency <laughs> <laughs> Yes indeed So um, I'm with you man I, I, I think it's Vols or Pass um, I hope it's lower than five uh, But We'll see We shall see So I, I, I lean Vols Um won't be easy, but they just, uh, like you like to say, I, I, I think they got too many dudes. It's a road game, but uh, I lean Vols. All right, uh, wrapping it up, Mississippi State at Mizzou. Okay, this might be time for Mizzou to get their uh, first SEC win of the year, and I say that because Mississippi State is 0-6, both straight up and against the spread uh, in six road games, and they have lost – um, by 32 at Bama, they lost by four at Ole Miss last week, by nine at Florida, by 13 at Kentucky, by, um, six at South Carolina. So, and do they have a, oh, and they lost by eight at Georgia Tech back in nine con. Um, hard pass for me. Hard pass. There's no, I'm not going to watch this game. Uh, I'm not going to be vested in this game. Uh, and I don't trust either side. I, that's uh, well said. Uh, I, w- I need to mention that uh, Missouri's leading scorer, kind of like LSU, uh, Sean East is questionable, and he did uh, miss their loss at A&M the other night. He averages 15.6 points per game. He shoots 46.6% uh, from three and 51.6% from the field and 4.1 assists per game. He's got a knee injury. He's questionable. Uh, since December 3rd, Missouri has one win versus number 342 in Ken Palm, Central Arkansas. It has been a struggle for the Mizzou uh, Tigers. Um, Okie dokie. So uh, just in review, um, we're we're okay with a Bama play. Or, or you like Bama, right? I do like Bama. I do like Bama going down there and – and, and getting well. My, my three biggest will be Bama on the road, laying the points. Kentucky laying, uh, if it's as low as three, I love Kentucky. Right. And I'm, and I'm comfortable with Tennessee uh, being a road favorite in College Station, even though that is going to be an environment. Ten- Tennessee's got way too many weapons. All right, so for me, I'm okay with Alabama in a money line parlay. I, I don't know that I'll be laying seven or eight on the road. Uh, I'll be on the under on uh, Vandy, South Carolina, as long as it's in the 130s. I, I don't know that I would do like a 128 or 129. Uh, if the Gators are catching four, that'll be a small play for me. Um, and it, it may be a little money line, but I would do the plus four for a, a little more, make sure I profit if they uh, you know, lose by three or less. Um Georgia, Arkansas, that's probably a pass for me. I may be on the Vols. Uh, I wouldn't lay more than five, but if it's five or fewer, I certainly lean that way. And uh, don't know about Missouri's leading scorer, so no major opinion there. I, I do want to throw out a couple of uh, uh, things that have been working well for me. Uh, 
Air Force overs. I believe it's now eight eight in a row and thirteen and one. They play Fresno tomorrow. Ken Palm's got that uh, total in the mid one thirties. If it's in the mid one thirties, or I, I would say I would play it all the way up to one forty um, because I believe it's nine of their thir- last thirteen have had one hundred and forty seven or more combined points, obviously. And Northwestern to the over. Um, I believe they've hit 11 in a row. I had them against Nebraska. Uh, oh, another, another one I forgot. Uh, I also like Kentucky game uh, over against Gonzaga because over's on a 17-3 and three, uh, run there. And I know you had Memphis. So what did you have, minus six or six and a half? Mm-hmm. About an hour before game time, it moved to 10 and a half like that. I couldn't find any injury information on Temple. And – I, I went. I was looking on Twitter all the way up till tip, three minutes before tip, because Memphis has been playing so poorly. I, I put uh, Temple in plus eleven, and um, <clears throat> I left my house at halftime down eighteen. I got home later. I checked the final. We both won. Yeah, we did. <laughs> I, and I was thinking to myself, if I had if I had seen that, because I put my uh, my Jays plays out at five o'clock in the afternoon, uh-huh. and sometimes that can be a little difficult for players out there. Sure. And I probably need to add a little note to it because if I'm I ride it earlier than five o'clock, and those lines, if they change drastically, I mean, you I mean you, you hey, can't control that. If you got six, if you got it at six and a half, and it pops up at eleven, feel free to play both sides and try to get a sandwich. Sure. I mean, would have worked last night. It would have worked. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed.